everybody, this is Brittany Murphy, and you are now part of an adventure, which is basically a behind-the-scenes look at Uptown Girls. One of the things that I think is, is interesting about the movie, actually, and is a little unusual, is that it's not really a love story in the typical sense. It starts out with Molly attaching herself emotionally to this guy that, that she seduces into her life. Oh, my God, who is that? It's my boy, Neil Fox. I found him playing at a dive in the village, man. He's smoking. Can I have him for my birthday? What you think is going to be a romantic comedy actually ends up being something completely different. It's, it's not a love story between Molly and this guy. It's actually a story about friendship between Molly and this little girl. And the relationship with the guy is almost right? like a red herring. Like, it's what Molly shouldn't be focusing on. And she realizes that partway through the film. You know, in describing characters, I, I, I have a difficult time. It, it's as if describing yourself. I, I always see it as three different versions. The one you read, the one you perform and become for a few months and then the final product. And uh, they're, they're so very different. And it takes a little while to be able to step back and look at it objectively and look at the character objectively. The character of Molly is a very extreme kind of a character. I've always seen it like you needed someone that could achieve what Lucille Ball achieved in some of her things. Not maybe quite as over the top, but with that level of physicality and a real, she really has to be this force that kind of pulls you through the film and there's there's very few actresses that that really have that kind of energy and vitality and and, and ability to pull all that kind of thing off one of the reasons why I, I wanted to be a part of this was because I felt a very kindred spirit in Molly and and definitely wanted to do something that's just very purely instinctively me it's just a I don't know. It's how I am, and it's something that, for some reason, it's, it's unspoken. So I was really, you know, grateful to be able to immortalize that part of my youth forever. <laughs> Hi, Lorraine. It's Ray. Nobody called me Lorraine. Okay, Ray, I'm Molly. Remember we met at my birthday party? Dakota was the first person who kind of signed on to the movie. She actually got the movie made, and uh, at the time I thought it was kind of funny until I saw her start working. What I loved about Boaz was he was really open to my ideas. He really wanted me to, what, now what are your ideas? He would tell me his ideas, and, I, and he was open to that, and um, that was what was so great about him. She approaches things from the point of view of character, and solely from the point of view of character, and you can have discussions with her about character and what a character should and shouldn't be doing, as if you were talking to a 40-year-old actor. Doing ballet in front of a live audience was actually kind of not that nerve-wracking because I was sort of used to it because I had done ballet recitals before. And uh, when, you f when you film movies, you have 200 people around you watching you, so I was sort of used to it. Well, Dakota is quite a ham, so we would, we would take fabulous photo shoots in the hair and makeup trailer. Love her, <laughs> love her. She is a force of nature. When we were in New York, the, there were paparazzis all around because they can't control them there. So we're in the middle of a scene, and they're yelling, "Britney, Britney, over here!" Dakota, Dakota. And of course, we can't look over, and we're like, "What is that? Why are these people yelling at me?" Why are they yelling my name? And I looked over and they're going, Hi, how are you today? Hi. I've heard there's a birthday here tonight. Where's that birthday girl? It's surprisingly hard to find a young man who was attractive and had charisma, but that was relaxed about it, that had a comfortable sense of, of his own masculinity and of his own identity. And I think that's the best thing about Jess is that he's comfortable with himself. He's very young, but he's already comfortable with himself. He's confident. It may come with being Australian. I don't know. They tend to do better with that than, than we do here. He kept it simple and clear and honest. And I think that's really what the part demanded. And he did a great job with that. 
my character Neil Fox really jumped out because he was apart from the music thing and um, actors always want to be musicians and musicians always want to be actors but um, he was kind of a very driven kind of guy who knew what he wanted and it just seemed to really strike a chord with me and um, I really wanted to play it. I'm Neil. Neil was her guy and I think he was a stepping stone to helping Molly discover that she didn't need a man in her life to be whole and that perhaps it was a lot healthier for her to work on herself so that she was able to give to herself before she could give to others. Obviously she could give a whole heck of a lot more to others if she fed her own soul. Uh, she wasn't doing that in the beginning of the film, but towards the end she's learning how. Oh my God. This place is beyond its normal grotesque. It's post-nuclear. I knew I had to have Marley as Ingrid. She just has the combination of sensitivity and high strungness and, well, she's just really a very good actress. She can really do a lot. I was so enchanted by just the whimsical fairy tale aspect of the story and that it was a comedy and yet had so much of a visual picture attached. And I think that's been the goal with this whole movie is to try to tell a comedy without sacrificing style. Marley Shelton and I have had this sort of non-friendship friendship for years. We would run into each other and every time I looked at her, she reminds me of a family member. She actually, she looks like my mom to me. There's something about her eyes and I mean, she's just so stunningly beautiful. And I, she's now become one of I mean, I always say, Marley's my one true friend, but she's really, she'll always, hopefully, will be old and gray and knock wood, poo, 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 and 80 years old on the porch talking about life. She's so dear to me, and we really became close during the filming. Right, but Huey is one big party. Body shot! The Huey part was actually originally written a little bit more edgy, a little bit less likable. But I knew that unless there was someone in there that was just charming and fun and actually represented the party, that you wouldn't understand this other side of Molly's life as well. And the thing about Donald is that all he has to do is walk on screen and he is the party. You don't even need to see a party. You know there's a party there if Donald's there. That's what I'm talking about. Donald was the lucky one who got to do more research <laughs> um, in terms of night nighttime activities because his character is the the wild one are you talking about me oh. <laughs> <laughs> well our first night out out when we when we got here boaz took us all out and made it very clear to us that he wanted it to be as real as possible he wanted our friendship on screen to be as real as possible so that night we all went out to a club the night after that we all went out to a club we just you know enjoyed New York City and what it has to offer. Pretty much for research. See, because I don't like going to clubs. You know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't like drinking. I don't drink. You know what I'm saying? But for the movie, I mean, I figure I'll take one for the team, go to a club, enjoy myself. Okay, get under the tail. Under the I'm tail? I'm my hand under his high knee. Hey, you want him to stay here or not? I was terrified. You know, you hear about working with kids and can it, animals and it, it actually was just a fantastic experience. Um, this guy, Steve, who was the animal trainer, trained a couple of these, uh, these small pigs to play Moo, the, the pig, and um, they were amazing. We had two pigs, and they were twins, Springer and Softy, and the only way you could tell them apart was one of them had a little gray freckle on his body, so that's, that's how we could tell them apart. So they would both be running around, and we'd look with a little freckle. They were just adorable. Boy, you don't want to get them upset because they squeal quite loud. <laughs> there was one day during the bathtub scene where we had a heck of a blast with them. But we really, we had fun all the time with their little snouts. And I love piggies. Since I was a little girl, I always dreamed of having a pig. So I was able to live vicariously through Molly and have a pig for a few months. It was very cool. The pig is squealing because it's being we're having to wash it and it's supposed to jump out of the tub and the tub's high so it's trying to jump out and it's squealing and Brady's like is it happy is it happy and the pig trainer's like look at the tail because the tail was always going like that all the time 
but it was really, really cute. Listen, when we're rolling, I don't want you filming me, okay? When they say action, you turn that camera off. When people talk about some of the style of the film, we really tried to go for a very elegant, fluid, flowing style with a lot of reflection shots, a lot of shots that um, will have two minutes in one take without a cut, combined with shots that have a lot of cutting to give it a different kind of a rhythm. But I, I was very influenced by Fellini. It was sort of like my Fellini school doing this film. Boaz's work is so beautiful. I, I adore watching his films and, and the work that he's put out into the world. One of the things that I respect most about him is that he has such a very precise, clear vision of what he would like to do and he sticks to that. Each day was like going to Disneyland. All the sets were so colorful and such a different world and a different environment. And, and my character, Ingrid, she, she always tries to match her environment. So it's almost like she could easily be a throw pillow wherever she is. The very first time I was invited onto the set of the apartment, of Molly's apartment, I, I had seen drawings and sketches of, of what it was to be but never in my wildest imagination could I have possibly dreamt up a dreamier apartment. Boaz has had such an incredible vision for this film and it's, it's so large in its scope and, and Michael Ballhaus, our DP, you know, they've, everyone's worked together. Kalina, our production designer, have all come together to form this just real, real storybook kind of princess fairy tale. I, I really did feel like it would be fun to do one of those movies that makes New York look like just a beautiful, charming jewel of a place. That's been part of the fun of this thing. It, it is a bit of a fairy tale. It's not a realistic film. And um, picking the locations and the angles and the sides of the city that show that. Definitely f after spending some time in LA and, and not being in the city for a while, it, it felt good to come back and do something real charming and, and beautiful about the city. It was just so fun just to get to meet all the wonderful people we, and to go to New York. It was my first time in New York. I'd only been for like less than 24 hours before. And to go for two months, we went to the Empire State Building and I cried in line for 45 minutes not, even, not wanting to go up. And um, just, it was so fun and to go shopping and look at all the things that you see on TV. Fifth Avenue, Madison Avenue, the Plaza. It's filmed like a fairy tale, and I believe that Manhattan is a fairy tale. I believe that any dreams can come true there. Any dream can happen in Manhattan. And, um, you know, it's the greatest city on earth.